Welcome to the beginning of our next unit. As you can see, the uh, title for our next unit is all about what's called stoichiometry. This is uh, one of those things that students uh, many times after high school look back and think, oh yeah, I remember stoichiometry in my chemistry class. It's, uh, it, it is a little bit challenging, but it's also a lot of fun. A lot of the stuff that we learned in our previous unit, we're going to continue to use learning uh, using moles, using percent compositions, using empirical formulas, and things like that. So stoichiometry is, uh, it's, uh, as you can see, it's a pretty uh, uh, short little section that we're going to be working on, but it's, uh, it's a real important concept to understand in terms of chemistry. So our objectives for today is we're going to learn what are called mole ratios, and we're going to be able to construct those from balanced equations, which we already know how to write. And then we're going to apply those ratios when we're doing some stoichiometry calculations. We're going to do some more calculating with these quantities from these mole ratios. And uh, we're going to do, a, this is quite a bit of math we're going to be looking at here in the next uh, few weeks. So what is stoichiometry? The sto when we talk about stoichiometry, it's, it's actually not too bad. As we've learned already, if you have the grams of a substance, and you need to convert it to the moles of a substance, we've already learned that you can use the molar mass from the periodic table to go from grams to moles. Well, now what we're going to do is we're going to basically, we're just going to take another step. And that extra step is now we're going to do the stoichiometry step. So this we've already learned. Now we're just going to take it one step further. <clears throat> and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be comparing these masses, the masses of the reactants, to the mass of the products in a chemical reaction. Okay, and so what we can do when we have, when we're using stoichiometry, is if we can say, if we know how much of a reactant we have, how much of a product will we get? So if you start with 10 grams of salt and you react it with uh, something like um, uh, so, or, uh, potassium hydroxide, how much sodium hydroxide are you going to get from that reaction? Or we can also use the products and figure out how much of a reactant we need to solve that problem. So stoichiometry is based on a real important law. It's based on the law of conservation of mass. And it's kind of the sim similar to the law of conservation of matter, which tells us that you can't destroy matter and you can't uh, create matter. All you can do is you can change matter. So you can change new bonds, you can form new bonds, but you can't destroy a carbon atom. Okay, so same thing here. Stoichiometry is based on this idea of the mass of your reactants must equal the mass of your products. You can't destroy any of the mass. So however much your reactants weigh, that's how much your products must weigh as well. And that's called the law of conservation of mass. Whatever you start with, that's what you have to end up with as well. Think about like burning wood. When you burn wood, a lot of that mass appears to be gone. Well, it appears to be gone, but it's actually not. A lot of that mass is up in the sky in the form of smoke. So yes, even though the wood that you bring in is really heavy and there's only ashes left, uh, we think, well, some of that mass has been lost. It actually hasn't. It's now just up in the sky. So using the moles of the reactants we're going to be able to determine how many moles of each product will be produced and we can express the mole ratio let's talk about what that means here's a balanced equation we've got calcium hydroxide reacting with phosphoric acid when they react it's going to form a double replacement reaction and so the calcium as you can see is going with the phosphate here to form calcium phosphate and then the H is going with the OH to make water. I've already balanced the equation for you and everything. Now, what this equation is telling us, looking again at our coefficients for our balanced equation, it's telling us that three moles or three particles, or however you want to think about it, of calcium hydroxide are going to react with two moles of phosphoric acid and make one mole of calcium phosphate, there's our one that we don't write, and six waters. And so from this balanced equation we can see that, that these numbers up here in the front 
can tell us the particles, but it can also tell us the number of moles. That if you have three moles of calcium hydroxide, you're going to make, for example, six moles of water. And so what we can do is we can, com we can compare two of the parts of that chemical reaction. For example, <clears throat> here we can say if we want to compare calcium hydroxide to calcium phosphate. So let's compare calcium hydroxide to calcium phosphate. We can say that for every three moles of calcium hydroxide, we get one mole of calcium phosphate. Or we could write it the other way around. We could put one mole of calcium phosphate on the top and we could put three moles of CaOH2 on the bottom. And what these are is this is what's called a mole ratio. It's comparing, again, using the coefficients in the balanced equation, it's comparing the moles of one part of the reaction to the moles of another part of the reaction. Okay, so here's a reaction right here, magnesium reacting with hydrochloric acid to make hydrogen gas and magnesium chloride. What is the mole ratio of hydrochloric acid and magnesium chloride? We can see here, for every two moles of hydrochloric acid we have, we get one mole of magnesium chloride. And so we could write it either way. We could put one mole of magnesium chloride on top and two moles of hydrochloric acid on the bottom. Or flip it around, two moles of HCl on the top, one mole of magnesium chloride on the bottom. Okay, so this means that if we had exactly two moles of hydrochloric acid, it would make exactly one mole of magnesium chloride. Okay, here's the problem, is obviously we don't always have exactly one mole or two moles or three moles of a chemical. And so what we have to do is we have to use, when we measure things, we know that we measure them using a, a balance or a scale, and that tells us the grams of the substance. So what we need to do is we have to start by using the masses. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to have a completed and balanced chemical equation. Okay, if the equation's not balanced, this doesn't work. The reason that we can write these mole ratios here is because the equation is correctly balanced. If your equation is not balanced, this does not work. Okay, number two, if they give us grams, we have to convert the grams, the mass, to moles. This is the, Now this is review. This is something that you should already know how to do. Convert grams to moles using the molar mass from the periodic table. And then the third thing we're going to do, now here's the new part. This is the stoichiometry step. So when we talk about stoichiometry, this is really what we're talking about, is we're using the coefficients. Again, remember, the coefficients are those numbers in the front. So when we have <clears throat> these are our coefficients, that's a coefficient even though it's not there. Any of, the, any of those numbers in the front, those are our coefficients. We're using those coefficients to convert from the moles of one substance to the moles of another and we're using the mole ratios to do that. And then we can, once we get the moles of something else, we can convert to grams. So let's look at an example. Number one, lithium metal reacts with water to produce hydrogen gas and lithium hydroxide. If 6.23 grams of lithium is placed into a large amount of water, how much lithium hydroxide will be produced? So, first of all, we have to have a balanced equation. So, number one, we're going to take our lithium metal, we're going to react it with water, and we're going to get, as it says, hydrogen gas, that is a diatomic molecule, and lithium hydroxide. And then we just want to check and make sure that it's balanced. One lithium, one lithium, two hydrogens, I see two hydrogens plus one more makes three hydrogens. So this, the left side has two, the right side has three. So our only choice is we'll start by doubling that number right there. So now we have four hydrogens. On this side we only have three. So let's put a two right there. So we have two hydrogens here, and now we have two hydrogens here. That makes four. Now by putting that two there, it messes up our lithiums, though. So let's put a two over here on lithium. 
and then we also have two oxygens and two oxygens. So now we, ha now we have our balanced equation. <clears throat> okay, our next step is to convert the known mass to moles. So the only information they've given us is they've given us 6.23 grams of lithium. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our 6.23 grams of lithium, 6.23 grams of Li, and we're going to convert that to moles. So using a periodic table, I'm looking at the mass of lithium. It says 6.941. I can just use 6.9 grams in one mole of lithium. And then I grab a calculator, and we're going to go 6.23 divided by 6.9, and I get an answer equal to three significant figures, 0 0.903 moles of lithium. Okay, our next step. Now that we have the moles of lithium, now we're going to use our coefficients from the balanced equation. Now, this again, this is where it gets a little bit, where we got to start thinking a little bit. <clears throat> so, here we've got lithium, and we know how much lithium we have. The, what did it, so, our, we have to choose two of these things to, to, to use the mole ratio on. And we're going to choose what the information we know, and then we're going to look at what they're asking us about. They're asking us about lithium hydroxide. So our, mole, our ratio is for every two lithiums, you're going to get two lithium hydroxides. And so we've got our 0 0.903 moles of lithium. So we're going to take our 0 0.903 moles of lithium, and we want to cancel those. And so we want to put moles of lithium on the bottom. So again, coming back to our balanced equation, two moles of lithium are going to make two moles of lithium hydroxide. So we're going to put two moles of lithium on the bottom. And again, the reason we put moles of lithium on the bottom is so they're going to cancel. And then on top, we put whatever they're asking us about, two moles of lithium hydroxide. And now we know that 2 over 2 just cancels. But we do know that if we have 0 0.903 moles of lithium, 0 0.903 moles of lithium, we're also going to have 0 0.903 moles of lithium hydroxide. Okay, and again, that right there, that is using the moles from the balanced equation to convert from one substance to another substance. Again, that is our really what's our stoichiometry step. That's what's create going from one comp compound to another one. Okay, and now that we have our moles of lithium hydroxide, 0 0.903 moles of LiOH, now we can convert those moles back to grams. So now we can say, okay, lithium hydroxide, let's go to the periodic table. Lithium again is 6.9. 6.9 plus oxygen, 16, hydrogen, 1, 23.9 grams per mole. So again, but we want to cancel moles. So in one mole of LiOH, there are 23.9 grams. So now we just take our answer, 0 0.903 times... 23.9 and we get a final answer of 21.6 grams of LiOH. Now again, let's talk about what this means. Let's come back to our very beginning question. If you start with 6.23 grams of lithium, you're going to end up with 21.6 grams of LiOH. And obviously we're not worried about water right now. We're not worried about hydrogen. Um, but that is what that problem tells us, is that if you start out with a certain amount, this is how much of that you can end up with. And again, we, had, we didn't calculate water or hydrogen, but, but we could. And then we would see that the amount that we started with would be the amount that we end up with. <clears throat> okay, now let's, uh, let's go ahead and write this whole thing out as one 
instead of separating it into four different steps, let's do it all as one step. So we're starting with our 6.23 grams. 6.23 grams of lithium. Our first step was to convert our grams of lithium to moles. 6.9 grams and one mole of Li. Now instead of stopping right here and getting a number, we can just keep going. And that'll give us, that'll make it easier for you. Okay, so our next step is to go from moles of lithium to moles of what they're asking us about. They were asking us about lithium hydroxide. So from the balanced equation, two moles of lithium are going to form two moles of lithium hydroxide. And then my final step was to go from moles of lithium hydroxide to grams using the molar mass, which was 23.9 grams in one mole. Notice here that any time you use the molar mass, it's always the grams in one mole. A lot of times what students will do is they'll start putting these numbers here over here. Okay, remember, whenever you're using the molar mass from the periodic table, it's always the number of grams in one mole. Don't ever put two or three or some another number there. This is the only step where you use the numbers from the balance equation. Now, when we're doing this entire problem, we can go 6.23 divided by 6.9 times 2 divided by 2 and then times 23.9 and then we'll still get that same answer of, what was it, 21.6, something like that, if I remember correctly. <clears throat> okay, let's look at another example. Um, uh, if, we, if we use this same, same e balance equation, so let's write that one out again. So it was lithium and water, okay. So lithium and water making hydrogen gas and lithium hydroxide and it was two two and two so we can use the same balanced equation we can answer another question how many grams of hydrogen will be formed by the reaction between 80 50, 80.57 grams of lithium and water so again we're going to start with our 80.57 grams of Li and now we need to cancel grams so again 6.9 grams in one mole of lithium now we need to convert from lithium because that's the information they're giving us to what they're asking us about they're asking us about grams of hydrogen so we're gonna go from moles of lithium to moles of H2 so now we can say, okay, from our balanced equation, two moles of lithium is going to produce one mole of hydrogen. So two moles of lithium are going to make one mole of hydrogen. And now our final step, one mole of H2. Hydrogen has a mass of one, but there's two of them, so it's two grams. So we're going to go 80.57, divide it by 6.9, divide by 2, times by 2, and my final answer I get is 11.68, four significant figures, 11.68 grams of hydrogen. Okay? <clears throat> All right, let's look at a couple more here. Let's just, we're just, I'm going to do these a little bit quicker, just so you, again, you can kind of see it. So nitrogen monoxide, NO, reacts with oxygen gas, O2, to form nitrogen dioxide, NO2. Uh, in this case, we're going to need to balance it. So we're going to need a 2 here and a 2 here. Now the question is, how many grams of nitrogen dioxide are formed if 5.23 grams of oxygen are allowed to react with the nitrogen monoxide? 
So let's start with what we know, 5.23 grams of oxygen. Now we want to convert our grams to moles, 32 grams in one mole of O2 from the periodic table. Now we're going to go from what we know, oxygen, to what they're asking us about. They want to know about nitrogen dioxide. So we're going to go from this one to this one. So we can say one mole of O2 is going to make two moles of NO2. And now our grams of oxygen have canceled, our moles of oxygen have canceled. Now we just need to go from moles of NO2 to grams of NO2. So 14 plus 32 is 46, so there's 46 grams in one mole of NO2. So now I'm to my calculator part, 5.23 divided by 32 times 2 times 46. And I get a final answer on that one of three significant digits, 15.0 grams of NO2. Okay, let's look at one more here. Glucose, C6H2O6, burns an oxygen gas producing carbon dioxide and water. Okay, so let's worry about the balanced equation first. Uh, let's see, let's go ahead and erase this top one. Uh, if you need to see it still, you can just back the video up and look at it. So we've got C6H12O6 reacting with oxygen to make CO2 and H2O. We've got six carbons, six carbons, 12 hydrogens on the left, so a six here. Now let's look at our oxygen. Six times two is 12, plus another six is 18. So I count 18 oxygens on the right. On the left hand side I already have six, so I need 12 more. So I'm gonna put a six right there. Okay, so now we have our balanced equation. So if we have one gram of glucose, and I'm gonna kinda of abbreviate this, I'm just gonna put 1.00 grams of C6. Now we know it's the whole thing, but again, I'm just trying to save some space on my screen here. So one gram of C6H1206. We calculate the mass of that. 72 plus 12 is 84. 84 plus 96 is 180 grams in one mole of C6H1206. Now, balanced equation. One mole of C6H1206 so one mole of C6H1206. Now what are they asking us about? They're asking us about water. So we're gonna put, here's our water right here, six moles of H2O. Okay, for every one mole of glucose, you get six moles of water. And then our final step, one mole of water has a mass of 18 grams. So we're going to go 1 divided by 180 times 6 times 18 equals, on my calculator it says exactly 0 0.6. I want to use three significant figures though, so I'm going to go point six zero zero grams of H two O. Now let's come back here real quickly. What if here at the end, what if instead of they instead of if they had said how many moles of water are produced, then our problem actually gets a little bit easier. Then this last step right here we wouldn't have to do. We would just get to moles of water and then we would be done. So you gotta be real careful what they, what they ask you for in the problem. Because if they only say moles, don't get grams, they only need to get moles. Sometimes instead of starting with grams, they'll just start right with moles. They'll say instead of 5.23 grams, they'll say 5.23 moles. So instead of starting with grams, you start with moles. So a real easy way to, uh, to, to do this, 
coming back to our objectives, to write a general formula from converting from the mass of one thing to the mass of something else. You're going to go from the grams of A to the moles of A. And the way that you do that is you use the molar mass from the periodic table. Then to go from the moles of one substance to the moles of another substance. So let's say the moles of A to the moles of B. What you have to use to do that is you have to use the balanced equation. The balanced equation is what you use to go from the moles of one thing to the moles of something else. And then our last step is to go from the moles of B to the grams of B. And again, what do you use? You use the molar mass of B. Okay, and obviously here you're using A. <clears throat> and so when you're doing this, you could start here and go to here. You could start here and go to here. You could start here and come all the way down to here. You just have to realize where am I starting and where do I need to get. And that will give you a good idea about how to solve the problem using stoichiometry.